Hey guys, Irene here and today I'm gonna show you how I edited the backlit images from the last behind the scene video. If you haven't seen the video, I will link it in the description down below. But this is kind of what we're gonna be trying to achieve. So on the left you have a picture that's straight raw image from the camera and on the right you have the image that's edited. Uh, today we're gonna be actually editing this image right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start with opening it in Photoshop and it opens it in camera raw. I shot all of my pictures in raw uh, and it's very important step to editing the backlit images. If you shoot them in JPEG you're not gonna have as much creative power over the images. The image is not gonna have as much information in it and so you won't be able to bring as much detail back in post. But if you shoot them in raw with just some easy steps, you will be able to bring the details back and light her up just with natural light. Um, I don't use strobes and I use reflectors mostly for just beauty shots. For this shot right here, I didn't use any additional light except for just the window light. Because as you can see, I can easily bring back the details with just sliding the shadows up a little bit. Okay, so I don't want to bring them too far up and I wanna play with the white balance a little bit. We're gonna make it a little bit more yellow and we're gonna add just a little bit more of the pink. Mm, actually, I think the pink is fine. Let's just slide it more towards the yellow right here. I want these pictures to have a warmer tone. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's make it a little bit more contrasting and let's lower the highlights a little bit as well. As you can see, if I'm lowering the highlights, the background becomes more interesting and more detailed. So this was the before and this is kind of the after on the highlights. The only thing is when you play with shadow and highlights, it actually brings up a lot of the detail in the skin, but we're going to get rid of that later. Let's uh, give it a little bit of clarity, just like a three and let's put the vibrance up a little bit more. Um, so all I usually do here is I just play with different settings and kind of figure out what I like. Uh, let's actually go to the colors here on uh, the luminous. No, let's do the saturation and make the yellow more saturated. Let's make the magentas more saturated. All right, so I think this is good. So this is the before and after. Just in camera raw, I really like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just open the image in Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the crop a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get the selection tool and select this area right here. And then right click on it, free transform, right click distort and just stretch it out to the side and then I'm just going to apply the transformation and I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on this side. Let's try not to grab her hand in it so we don't stretch it out. Free transform, distort. I can easily just stretch out the sides because I was shooting at such a low aperture uh, that it doesn't really disturb the background much. So the next thing I usually do is some liquefying. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my layer. Uh, go to filter and liquefy. I guess I didn't notice that I didn't stretch out this side very well, but it's okay. We're going to just fix it and filter here. Okay, so I'm going to push her waist in just a little bit. And I'm also going to push her shoulders down just a touch. These are the tiniest little changes. Um, I'm not doing a lot and just be careful when you're using the liquify tool because you can really make it look 
unnatural so you just have to do the tiniest little movements and i always go ahead and make the hair bigger especially i like to stretch out these little tiny hairs because it makes it look a little bit more soft Let's stretch out a little bit here All right, I think that looks good. So let's go and save that. And here is the before and after on the liquefying. If you liquefied the background a little bit, what you can do is take your eraser tool and just erase around it. But I don't think it really disturbed the background too much and it's not very visible anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge my layers. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is work on her skin. So let's get a lot closer. The focus on this particular image is a little bit softer than the other images, but I really don't mind it. I like when the picture is even slightly out of focus sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my layer as usual. And I'm going to go ahead and use the patch tool. If you don't have your patch tool selected, uh, it's usually on the healing brush so uh, go ahead and right click on your healing brush and then just select the patch tool for some reason I like working with patch tool more than a healing brush so that's what I usually like to use so let's get pretty close and the way the patch tool works is that you will circle up the imperfection and then you would just move it to the side where there's no imperfection and it copies that skin on top of the imperfection if that makes any sense um, and I'm using my Wacom uh, Intuos tablet to do this so it's very fast and easy to do so I'm gonna go ahead and probably speed this up and show you guys the final result of the skin retouching Alright, so this is the before and after on the skin. Now I'm going to do some color matching. As you can see, there's a little bit of kind of darkness going on right here that kind of goes in one stripe and I want to make it more soft. So I'm going to go ahead and make another duplicate layer. And I'm going to use a few techniques. I'm going to use a patch tool. And I'm also going to use uh, just kind of brushing the color on onto her skin. So let's start with patch tool. And I'm going to lower my opacity to about 40. And I'm just going to go ahead and whenever I see that stark line between different colors, I'm just kind of going to try to blend it away so there's no harsh lines. so this is before and after the patch tool as you can see we kind of fixed it a little bit uh, let's make another duplicate layer I'm gonna go ahead and merge these and make another one and this is gonna be the last one for the skin um, what I like to do is take the sampling tool sample up the area that I want and then with the soft rounded brush I go really really lightly onto the skin I am using a tablet so I don't really need to worry about my opacity but if you are using just a mouse I would definitely recommend you lower your opacity to very low like 20% maybe. And I'm just kind of lightly tapping it where I want to distribute the color and then I'm changing the colors and tapping it where I want it to go. Let's just this rosy cheek color right here and put it a little bit more over here. Alright and then this is kind of what we did. If you don't like it, you can always lower the opacity even lower. Okay, yeah, that's great. 
and let's do one more round of the patch tool again I'm gonna lower my opacity uh, let's actually back it up a little bit too and see what it looks like okay we're almost done here All right, I think that actually looks pretty good. I don't think we really need to do anything else on the skin on the face here. Uh, I'm just going to also kind of get rid of some of the uh, texture on her arm. So I'm just going to choose the color here with sampling tool and then just kind of brush on that color onto her arm. Again, you have to be pretty careful here and just make sure that you're using very low opacity, very light brush strokes to make sure that it's still looking very natural because it's very easy to make this look very unnatural all right so i think that looks pretty good this is the before and after so let's go ahead and merge them down so now i'm gonna go ahead and start an adjustment layer and i'm gonna make it with curves and i'm just gonna gonna make it a little bit more contrasting but still a little bit lighter just about that and I'm gonna press ctrl I to invert my layer and what it does is that now when you pick up the brush you can brush on your adjustment onto the areas that you want and I want to brush it on only on top of the model so I'm gonna go ahead and with the soft rounded brush I'm brushing it on top of my model and here you can see the result it's very little but it definitely definitely does the magic all right that looks great uh, now i'm gonna go ahead and dodge and burn just a little bit so i have already my presets made for dodge and burn and i've showed you guys how to do this multiple times so i'm just gonna kind of skip this step and link the videos that you guys can watch on dodge and burn separately Alright, so this is a result of the dodge and burn. I'm going to go ahead and merge these. And let's do a little bit of color correction. I'm going to open adjustment layer with selective color. I'm going to go ahead and choose my yellows. Make them a little bit more yellow. Uh, reds, a little bit more red. Magentas more magenta and then I'm gonna choose the whites and I'm gonna make them a little bit more magenta and yellow mm. okay more magenta than yellow all right so this is after the color adjustment I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit because I think it's a little bit too much. Yeah, that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers. We are almost done with the image. I'm just going to go ahead and save it now and reopen in Camera Raw. I know a lot of people are confused about why do I have to save it and then reopen it. Uh, it's because I'm using Photoshop CS6. Uh, if you have Photoshop CC, it's a lot easier for you. You can just go into filters and you're going to see camera raw there. But as you can see, I don't really have it in my filters yet. I will, I will upgrade to CC at some point. I'm just too lazy. So I'm just going to go ahead and save my image. And I'm just going to go ahead and reopen it in Camera Raw. All you have to do is go to File, Open As, Find Your Image, and here change it to Camera Raw. And then press Open. And again, it opens in a Camera Raw. What I want to do here is bring up more clarity. Bring a little bit more exposure. Contrast. Bring the shadows up again just a little bit. And the highlights down. Okay, let's just see from the far. All right, yeah, this is beautiful. Actually, let's bring the vibrancy just a little bit. Okay. So this is it. This is the final image. Let's compare it to our original image. 
All right, so here's our before and this is after. Before and after, before and after. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As usual, give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my new videos. And I'll see you guys in my new video. Bye!